few takes a moments moment for it to, to kick in to get up to kick in to get out there to kick in all the people pump up on the, the volume the pump up the volume pump up the volume dance dance i don't like that guitar standing there yeah i don't like right. it either bad choice bad aesthetic choice terrible choice it's a terrible choice all right it looks like we are good <laughs> we're good this is for those of you just joining us this is bandless hello welcome this is a weekly show and it is a uh you know podcast for solo music creators which is i imagine what everyone watching is uh, or even if you're in a band, I think this stuff is probably going to be fun to consider, think about, talk about. It's mostly a big conversation. But uh, what is the show? Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time, uh, Nick and myself, we dig into the cornucopia of challenges that solo music creators may face. Series attempts to shine light on the tools tactics and perspectives that might help us put another foot forward yes so. sir today's topic what the heck is engagement besides social media and how can shy people or modest people go about it this is a great yeah. question Heck how yeah. can we go about it so before we really jump into it what's interesting about that is i am a pretty shy modest person yeah you you are you, are you uh, yeah, that i i was in no hurry to get in front of a camera and speak to no. <laughs> any anybody yeah same. so um yeah i would consider myself a uh, quiet person until you get to know me yeah so i am i think i am known as a loud person but only loud within a safe space you know say like right. safe uh friend group or whatever familiar and, yes yeah and people that might be on the periphery of that in a social setting be like yeah. who's that loud friggin' guy <laughs> but generally i'm like uh, socially maybe not anymore because i've been doing so much for about three years now but yeah my history is definitely that so hello everybody how What's are you doing up, everybody we got barry we got mike uh guitar fool JJ's House of Jams, Synth Chris, uh, Connor, Jeremy, and uh, that, that's all that we got in the chat at the moment. I hope you guys all are all good. Yeah, for the rest of you, uh, too shy to chat, you know, um, you don't have to be shy, but there's nothing wrong with being shy. It's kind of what today's uh, topic is all about. Absolutely. Um, and yes, we're talking about engagement uh, and... The first thing we kind of want to talk about with engagement is the mystery of it. Like there's the sort of advertising, marketing, social media side of engagement. And there is the community dialogue side of engagement. And there are no rules. You can approach it from any perspective that you want. There's nothing wrong with being a marketer. There's nothing wrong with being brazen and brash and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it may not be for you. It's not right. really for me. It's not really for like Nick. I think you and I share a very similar, um, not opinion, but sort of feeling on that. Yes, very much so. Um, yeah. And I guess uh, the first thing to dig into with that is, you know, sort of where do you, side like you side more on the community dialogue place um and or the community dialogue side of things with engagement right. yeah and uh for me my interest is kind of connecting with our people you know you and i we share sort of a bit of a crowd and then we have a little bit of our you know a, a bit more of a niche on this side and a niche on that side that kind of stuff when it comes to music or maybe the gear or maybe the production techniques or whatever the case may be but um uh you know my interest in community the community dialogue thing is to connect with people like us like me um because 
I don't know. That's the whole point. That's what, that's what I set out to do. Even when it comes to my music, I want to enjoy making my music and sharing my music with people like me who are also making music like me and all that other stuff, even if they just like music and don't play music. Right. Right. And, where, and so where are you, what are your sort of, what's your personal thoughts on those kinds of points? So I think we touched upon this uh, last episode um, and I didn't realize the power uh, of creating a community when I started my YouTube channel. It sort of like evolved into this thing. Right. And now it's sort of like the lifeblood, the driving force behind so much of it. Um, especially one, once I introduced, you know, the, the live streaming which uh, enables that interaction between those people that do get enjoyment or use out of what I'm putting out. And I get to interact with people that like my music, like what I'm doing, appreciate the help. Um, I didn't completely understand and realize the power behind it. And yeah. um, seeing it kind of grow before our eyes. And then when you and me kind of became friends and we started like, developing a very similar kind of community, um, you realize how, you know, you and I talk about this all the time. It's like there are people or maybe there was a time where it was sort of taboo to share like the secrets or how you got somewhere or like, let's use guitar tone as an example, where right. I just see it as like, let's just get everybody on the same page and see what happens, you know? Yeah. Um, the, you know, there is a, a point in uh, this first sort of section that is uh, kind of echoes that idea. And it's a saying that you kind of popularized for me. I'm sure it's been out there before, but I only really heard it from you. Uh, right. And it's all boats rise in a high tide. Yeah. And, that's kind of, it seems to be kind of what you're talking about where, you know, if you share your experiences, you got your, your, uh, a certain amount of your understanding and your, you know, just enough of a leg up to get into certain things from other people, other people shared things with you, whether it be right. in person or on the internet. Uh, I think maybe for both of us, a little bit of it came from in-person stuff previous mm -hmm. to the internet becoming what it has become. But, yeah. uh, yeah, it's other people kind of just giving you a little, throwing you a crumb, throwing you a bone. Uh, and through that, it kind of pulls you up. And the seems the more you, that you share, uh, the more that other people share. And it's just this cycle and everything kind of raise, rises together. Um, right. Speaking of, question for you, uh, in your you know, experience of kind of getting along as far as you've gotten along so far. Uh, is there any people that you've connected with, uh, you know, besides myself, uh, in, in a way that is sort of, uh, you know, either a friendship or meaningful in some way, or maybe even it's, if it's just technical, uh, people who have through you being out there doing what you're doing and also being involved, um, uh, people have, kind of uh, enriched your life in some way through this engagement idea? Um, yeah, there's been quite a few people. I mean, yes, you are the biggest example of uh, kind of building a relationship, especially a, a mutually fruitful one as far as like a friend, like personally. Yeah, um, our, our relationship is entirely because of engaging on the internet through all correct. these through these things, which is, yeah, wild. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I mean, it's, this is sappy, but it's pretty beautiful. You know, we've become genuinely best friends over yeah. the course of the last two years, and we've never been in the same room, which is kind of amazing. Yeah. But there's, there's exam, I have a few examples of that, you know, um, Gary Hibner, I've got to know a little bit. Um, yeah, Gary's, Gary's a good dude. Uh, Stephen Bartman from uh, Stephen Bartman, an ama Stephen amazing from dude. Yeah, gear stuff and things. A sweet guy. We we're building a friendship too. We talk 
a few times a week. Um, yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of you guys that I kind of go back and forth with emails um, that I've met in the chat from my live streams, like Costman, who is you know just a a killer dude. An he just engineer. made me. Yeah, he just made me three cables. <laughs> yeah, I saw. It. It's like Sick. he's a genuinely interest. He's an interested dude, and he's interesting. And yes. I would have never met him had it not been for this. So, yeah. um, and there's, there's more examples. Um, I'm getting to know more and more of you guys through the chat and stuff like that. Do you know Synth Chris? He's in the I'm chat. Getting right to know, got, yeah. I'm getting to know like Synth Chris slowly, but surely, like I've been listening to some of the stuff that he shared and he, I say, it, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of you guys that are here. Everything, every, every show, the bunner I do, I see the same people and that goes to like the community we're building and it's 99.99 percent of the time positive yeah and i think that's and can i interject for a second yeah absolutely uh sorry if the the, dogs are i like the dogs they were they were let the dogs out and not doing shit (laughs) until we started (laughs) um running around but uh, when you, I just want to clarify, like when you're, uh, when you refer to the community that we're building, the we is the community, like all, everybody who is participating. Um, yeah. It's not, it's not that you or I or any particular yeah, 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 person absolutely. is waving the magical uh, wand. Um, there is yeah, like certain exactly, amount of exactly. facility, I guess certain amount of uh or maybe visibility that helps visibility i don't know what to call it exactly like we're like a conduit like a to get things started yeah but the thing happens because of everybody yeah because there's nothing without it i mean your 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 facebook group is a perfect example of like yeah starting something and it blooming into something way bigger than you yeah which is my group not mine at which all. is the w- <laughs> yeah it's the point of it because inevitably and eventually um you know you guys are going to be answering as many questions that people come to us with you know yeah in the I- chat and and on groups and you're going to be able to have learn things from anybody in the chat not i'm not even like and also help learn. people out you that's know that's exactly what i was getting at it's yeah. like you guys, because of this community, will be able to help someone outside of the community and be able to bring more people in. And it's all boats rise in a high tide. Yep. Brilliant. I, we, I'm going to make that shirt for us. I need to uh, think about where I, again, it is definitely something that's been around forever, but I'm trying to, rem- I can't remember where, where I got specifically it from? heard it. It's a, yeah. uh, it was. Uh, high tide raises all boats wherever i heard that from but yeah yeah but uh we're gonna get it to we're gonna kind of get to comments in between each one of these little uh hit points so just to summarize uh you know what is engagement you can go about engagement from two points of view either a marketing kind of strategy or a community dialogue myself and nick hill think about it more in the idea of a community dialogue. Like I'm just interested in connecting with people like me. Um, not that we all have to agree and it doesn't insinuate that, you know, right. Healthy debate is very healthy, very good. Uh, it's not Agreed. people that Absolutely. agree with me or that I agree with, but, uh, yeah, community dialogue. I don't know if those terms are cheesy to describe it, but they best describe what we're talking about. Um, yeah. and in that space, you know, we're looking for our people, our tribe c- to connect with people like us. Um, and I guess to just to wrap this point up real quick, and we're going to get to some comments. Um, annoying questions for anybody who might be getting into uh, being more, I guess, public with what they're doing. And this topic of annoying questions, uh, it's something that's come up quite a bit in the last maybe year as a sort of topic surrounding a lot of things, maybe more the backside of what I'm doing, other creators or whatever. But uh, I don't believe that there are any annoying questions. I, you know, there are some questions or some topics 
that I personally might be a little bit fatigued with. That's a, it's a very pleasant way of saying it. Yes. Yeah. But it's true. No, uh, you're right. But this is something I had to learn for sure. You right. definitely have helped me with this. The, uh, but annoying questions, if you're in a niche space, uh, are not annoying. They're an Im incredible opportunity to connect with people from both sides. You know, people right. who sometimes, you know, in what I'm doing, the string question is a very, it's a very old question. What strings should I use? And type this of thing. is, um, if I can interrupt, this yep. was the learning. This was the learning that you shared with me because I was coming to you, I think, where I think it was either we were talking about it or we were working on videos or something. And I brought up the fact that I'll get X question as many X, X amount of times. And I was letting it frustrate me. And you kind of pointed this out to me. You're like, you're like, Nick, it's not, it's not so much the question is bad. It's, it's, they're trying to find something to relate to you. They like what you do. They want to engage with you. Yeah. And maybe they're an like, easy, this guy is like me. It's an easy stepping stone. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a softball question to throw out there to get an engagement. And you yeah. have to look at it that way. And I was, and, and it really opened up my eyes to, you know, not being so critical of those types of things. And, you know, I don't want to make it sound like I'm some big harsh a-hole and I don't appreciate <laughs> people reaching out because it's not the case. But like you said, um, there are times where things associated with the YouTube, the YouTube world can get fatiguing. And yeah, um, there's a lot happening. And a mindset about a certain aspect of it can uh, change whether or not that contributes to that fatigue. And I was letting that contribute to my fatigue when I was looking at it in a negative light. And since ha kind of changing my mindset on that, it's not a thing that annoys me. Yeah. And, and there's, and, yeah. Th there are probably people that you're connecting with that you would have blown off that you may be developing rich relationships with, right? you know, uh, rich, meaningful, helpful, uh, on both sides. You know, they're right. They're... And how and how is anybody supposed to know that I've been asked that question times in the last three days? It's yeah. not that's not realistic of me to expect yeah. of anybody. Sometimes like 500 times in the last three days. <laughs> sometimes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes not not joking. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm shaking my camera. Sorry. But uh, yeah. So to wrap up on that one, uh, what is engagement? You can approach the idea of engagement from a marketing type of strategy side or a community dialogue side. It's up to you. I personally prefer the community dialogue side. Um, and we're attempting ultimately from that perspective to connect with our people, our tribe, people like us. Uh, there truly are no annoying questions. Uh, it's always an opportunity to kind of connect with somebody and you never know what the nature of that connection might be. It might change right. your life forever, uh, in, in an amazing way. Um, not that it's always looking to get something out of it, but like, uh, you know, rich connections are rich connections, no matter which direction they're going. So, right. uh, and the whole idea of all boats rise in a high tide. I think if that's your driving philosophy, um, there are no uh, annoying questions and you're more likely to kind of connect with your people, people like you. Um, so that is, what is engagement? The very first thing. We're gonna get to some comments here, kind of get into the uh, a little bit of the conversation about this topic. If anybody, um, has ever been sort of confused on this idea of engagement. It's a weird topic as a creative because for myself and you, Nick, I know for a fact that it's not the thing that we, you know, we're running towards. Like, I just want to play guitar and make tunes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I want to hang out with my people, but... Uh, when you first encounter these sorts of ideas and you have to actually strategize how you go about 
tending to it because you have to manage your time. So the strategy for us is how we manage our time to actually engage and, and actually participate and be part of this thing. Um, but for any of you out there in the stream, in the uh, viewership, if there's anything about it that you're like uncomfortable with or you're like confused about or whatever, we can talk about it. This is a, just a regular conver conversation. So uh, yeah, there are no dumb questions or no dumb comments. Well, I guess there are, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, per you know, participate in this topic specifically. There's no dumb questions or comments in this uh, this topic. So, uh, you know, Mike Hoover brings up a, an interesting comment here. Nick, I gravitate towards your content because I find you sincere, relatable, organic, and you're incredibly helpful, like the majority of the Helix community, uh, uh, majority of the Helix community, for whatever that's worth. So, um, thank you, Mike. Yeah, I, I, I don't highlight this comment because, um, you know, it's highlighting Nick, uh, although that's that's awesome. Um, but, you know, when you're putting yourself out there, let's say uh, you just want to put yourself out there as a guitar player and you don't want to participate in these other things like maybe YouTube or kind of uh, sharing your, your backstory or anything like that or your technical uh, understandings. Um, there's still sort of a an example in what Mike shares here that I think if you're just who you are and you just do things the way you are in sort of like a positive, thankful way, um, that these are the things that are kind of the most important, sincere, relatable, yeah. organic, you know, uh, the words that Mike chooses to use there. Like, once again, I'm not trying to blow up Nick Hill, but I think these are things that are, th those are things that are important to me. Um, and I wish I would have thought a little bit more about it from this perspective before I went, started going on my own as a solo person and going out there. Because I was really, really nervous in the beginning of, you know, people are going to judge me and all this kind of stuff. And so what if people do judge you? Right. Uh, but the main thing is, are you connecting with people like you, like you, that like you, that you like, you know, this two way yeah. kind of thing, because that's all you need to do. Um, and yeah, and I think this is something that, you know, we, it, the, the point gets driven home and solidified the deeper we go into this thing that that sincere, relatable and organic, meaning just being who you are, not trying to pretend to be a YouTuber. Um, yeah, I think I there's probably videos if you go back and watch where it I'm sure it seems like I was trying to be like a YouTuber guitar dude <laughs> Ola type thing. But the further I got into it, a it gets exhausting. B, it, it, it wasn't translating. And even in the time that I've known you, you've helped me realize just be me more, you know, um, yeah. whatever that means. And I have more and more and more, maybe, <laughs> maybe to the detriment. I don't know, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, I think it's, it's always good like being genuine, I think relates to this as well as like the music aspect. We've talked about like writing music that you genuinely love yourself will attract people just because you're making music you love. It's yeah. just, it's just how it is. Yeah. This, it, that applies to this too, you know? Yeah. Um, even if, even there are how many channels of dudes playing guitar and, and writing music and gear and stuff are there on YouTube? countless countless there's there's but, a lot but if you be you you're going to bring that little bit like you don't know how the world works man some people will love this guy some people will hate this guy you know and yeah or just not vibe not necessarily hate but like eh, you know it's not yeah. for me 
people or this there, guy there are tons of people who don't like the bun who don't like the bun who don't like the bun's music who think the bun is a dumb guy yeah it's fine and that's just the way that the world is Correct. and um you know the funny thing is like i don't seek to be liked and i don't seek to um to be smart you know it's just that that part isn't even part of the the thing. I'm just kind of doing my thing, trying to pay forward anything that might be uh, helpful in what I'm doing, and also, uh, you know, share my music and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not yeah. too worried about that other stuff because, like, uh, going back to what we're we covered in the first point, um, we're trying to find our people people like us that we can just be ourselves around uh, and talk about the things that we like to talk about and grow from each other. So yeah. And the one yeah. sure way to attract those people is to just be yourself, um, be yourself. <laughs> and, and you have to have like, it really is the root of when, when you or I are stuck on a video or stuck on something or lacking inspiration or motivation, the thing that it boils down to is like, we need to be making and enjoying what we are doing first and foremost. Um, yeah. It sounds if, like a if your heart's endeavor. not in it, it doesn't, it always comes across cold. Correct. Yeah. You know, so. So Mike Hoover, thank you for that comment. Uh, kind of inspired a little tirade there, <laughs> but a uh, little, you know, hello to, People who have joined us recently, Kermit the Kermit Frog, uh, Connor, uh, Jeremy, you've been here for a bit. Uh, Matt Sorensen, hello. Uh, Tenacious Street Studios, hello. Uh, Q for the bun here, relating to your vid about bass for baritone. Uh, Matt, we're gonna. It's not that it's off topic. Everything's on topic, but we're gonna stick to this part of the thing for now. But when we're done this, we can get into a few other topics. So keep that on stoosh. I'm going to write it down here. And uh, we're going to get on to the next thing. Thomas Paul, hello, legends. Far from it. <laughs> uh, Thomas, like if you met Thomas Nick Hill, you, you'd just be like, this guy is the funniest, most awesome dude. Um, Turbo Plasma Chicken, hello. Uh, I hope you are well, man. Um, so our next thing here, uh, getting into this engagement topic, um, the shy part, the modest part. What if I'm too shy? What if I'm too modest? Uh, I am a pretty shy, pretty modest guy. I'm also uh, mildly Asperger's uh, on the autistic spectrum. Very high functioning. I don't have the challenges of that many have, but I do have challenges uh, that I had to adapt to in my uh, adult life. Not that long ago, but 15 years ago, I kind of started on that path. Uh, Nick, I know for you, you're also, you know, a pretty quiet, modest guy. We sort of opened the show with this topic. And yeah. uh, the first thing I kind of want to riff on is in terms of engagement, putting yourself out there, um, one thing I've noticed with a lot of my artist friends, especially in person, cause you hear all of it when you're in person, my, my real life, uh, flesh and blood, you know, obviously in recent months, there's no flesh and blood, anything, but, um, from those people, you hear about the things that really drive them wild. It's like, I dislike Facebook and I dislike how people do this and I dislike that. And I dislike this and having kind of participated as an artist in all of this for a few years now, my biggest takeaway is there's no right way to do any of it. You don't have to right. do the things that you don't like to do. And what would you have to say about that? I'm going to write down I mean, Matt's note here. Yeah, that's, that is, uh, that's something that not only will you realize kind of, the deeper in you get, you have to remind yourself constantly of it. I think it's one of the things that I need to remind myself of because we're, we're very quick to poo poo something if it's not yeah. like what we think, but 
it, when it comes to to this topic specifically, I think you're right in the fact that there is no right way to go about this. To like when we talk about uh, engaging based on your personality type, whatever you feel comfortable in the interim or the interim at the at the at that moment, roll with that because. Yeah, if you hate Twitter, don't use Twitter. I have a Twitter. I haven't posted anything to it for a year. Same. I don't use it. I mean, stuff gets pushed to it, but I don't use it either because it's not my thing. Yeah. Um, and a perfect example of this is you are very much um, a proponent of the uh, benefits of Facebook. And I am very anti-Facebook. I push right. back on you or to you with this all the time. And it's probably... I I would stand to gain if I were to use it in the way that you use it, but I just have my own hangups about it. And yeah, you're not jazzed about it. Yeah, you're not yeah. jazzed about it. Don't do things you're not jazzed. If if it pains you, you shouldn't do it because it's just gonna that the agony like, of any like of that. Earlier, will, it's gonna translate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so you may as well not even up with it, you know. Um, yeah. But that being said, um, I do kind of dip into it more and more because I see what you do with it. And right. the point I'm trying to make is like you have to have an open mind with these things. Um, like I said, you we have a tendency to poo-poo things we don't that don't immediately grab us. And that is, in my opinion, not the way to go about it. So, yes, put your efforts into the things that you're jazzed about, that you're stoked about. But yeah. have an open mind about potential benefits from yeah. other things. And it comes to anything, really, but yeah. this stuff especially. A, uh, a very famous abstract painter that I know, uh, Carrie McIntyre, she uh, has an amazing saying for that. And it's go where it's warm, where you feel warm, where it is warm. So it could be a, a few different things. But uh, using the Twitter thing as an example, I don't use Twitter. There's two reasons. A, I just really turned off by Twitter. B, I have tested it and tested it. And people like me aren't that jazzed about Twitter. Yeah. Meaning the the kind of... Uh, community that I want to interact with isn't really a Twitter user base. There are a few who use Twitter, but uh, yeah, most people like me are not on Twitter or don't care about Twitter. Just using Twitter as an example, it doesn't matter what the platform is. But uh, yeah, there's no right way. There's no right place. Uh, you got to find, go where it's warm. If you're an artist and you're like, I'm shy, I am modest. Do it your way and go where it's warm, where you feel warm, that. all that kind of stuff. Uh, if, you know, if I had to say this is a place to start, you know, start with one place. Don't even bother with all of the places. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Could be Bandcamp, you know, and there's a social comp component on Bandcamp. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know uh, if you're feeling weary because you're, I think my pen is falling apart. If you're feeling weary because you're shy or you're modest and you're like, I'm not a personality to put myself out there. Um, but you're like, I want to do this music thing because that is a very difficult situation to be in. I know because yeah. I've been in that situation uh, and it sucks. And I, I just want to share anything I can possibly share to maybe help people just dig themselves out of that because I was trapped in that for so long and I needed to, I needed to do it with a band. I needed to do it a very specific way. And that way was crushing me. It was keeping me from doing to, from living the life that I was interested in living, which was ultimately writing music. That's where my favorite place is, uh, writing music and obviously sharing it and getting into the cycle of that perpetuating itself. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I'm I, gonna, I made that, I made that real quick. I made that that same kind of those same kind of mistakes. I I, I had yeah. this, this. They're not mistakes, of, but I know what you're talking about. I know what you mean. Yeah, I had a vision of 
what I should have been doing or what I thought I should be doing where, you know, it took, you know, you just saying, put it out, put out your music, just put it out. Like, yeah. Cause I was waiting for this, that, a band, a singer, yeah. whatever, any, any, any obstacle I could throw up. I was, I was doing and yeah, you know, there's some we really, all do it, like you said, yeah, we all do it. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we're fools for punishment yeah um there's some really good comments we're gonna get to them um but uh i want to move along here this is yep. an example that you threw up when we were kind of uh thinking about the show um and so for those of you out there you're like you know i don't know like i, I i'm uncomfortable talking to other people and that could be in video like this, I was very uncomfortable with this, but I was even uncomfortable like yelling into the ether of social media, like in text format or putting my pictures up. I'm like, I'm not good looking. I'm not this. I'm not that. And, you know, I was kind of ha hampered myself through all of that because I was thinking about the things that obsessed on the inner sort of stuff obsessed about yeah. me as opposed to thinking about other people. And so this cool hack, you and I both use it. This might be helpful mm -hmm. to other people, but let's say you're doing a video. Uh, let's say you're writing a post to share your music. Um, write to someone, speak yeah to someone even though like you know you and i when we make our videos i usually make my videos and i'm talking to you even though you're not there i just kind of like thinking i'm like this is a message for nick hill uh and yep. if if the topic that i'm talking about is more appropriate for somebody else that i know and i'm like they would really get jazzed about this topic i kind of figuratively talk to them like it's actually yeah. happening that's where the direction that the dialogue is going um but even if i'm writing i try to write to a person that I know. And it could be myself. It could be like, right. okay, I'm going to write to my younger self. Uh, I'm going to speak to my younger self. Uh, though I wish I would have known this when I was 20 type of thing. Yeah. Or, I've done that a lot. Yeah. Or a note to myself when I'm older. Don't forget this. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you, like, do you use it, this idea? in mostly video or do, do you find it has spilled over into the other mediums of your crafting? You're not like a huge uh, text guy in your yeah. social media. Yeah. I've noticed. It's funny because I, I, I think we've talked about this. I love to write. I've always wanted to write, but I don't, I do so little of it in in this context because i'm afraid it's not good enough still to this day even though we're talking about all this stuff regarding like <laughs> not being afraid of video <laughs> and you know i use this same t tactic where if i'm making a video and it feels like i'm having an issue i'll just switch into i'm talking to bun or right. i'm talking to nick when i was trying to learn this or i'm talking to my kid who's you know he plays guitar and he's getting into this stuff like or the person like that I know in the chat that's asked this question before, I'm thinking of them in the chat. Um, the live stream is very good practice for this. Yes. But I use this tactic because you and I were, long ago were talking about it and you're like, just act like you're talking to me because I'm talking to you when I'm doing this video. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. And you yeah. sort of forget that you're talking to a camera. And it's something- And that I watch your videos, right? Like, right. So kind of knowing that helps. Uh, I watch your videos so you can talk to me because you know that I'll probably see the video. Right. Uh, it's like I, I don't miss too many. I do miss some sometimes, but <clears throat> yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, if you're uncomfortable talking to people, it could be in text, could be in any way, sh just sharing photographs. Uh, do everything kind of clo as it cl as close to home as possible uh, so that it's personal and meaningful and and for real, you know? Mm -hmm. 
don't worry about everybody else because everybody else probably isn't going to be paying attention. <laughs> you know, uh, even as you grow, like, you know, uh, let's take a huge person who has a huge audience. Like I know in camera land, there's like, you know, Matt DeAvella has millions of YouTube subscribers and gets, gets a lot of attention. Well, that's still just like a fraction of a percent of the earth's population. Right. It's a tiny amount of people. It's huge on an individual level. I'm not trying to devalue it. I'm just trying to put it into context. Um, you know, I used no, to be don't. really worried about, no, uh, you know, what everyone will think. Well, everyone is not going to be paying attention. And when you're at the beginning, it's great that not very many people are paying attention because it affords you the ability to pivot quickly. You're like, ah, this thing that I'm trying to do, it isn't really working. I'm going to change. So if not very many people are following, not very many people are paying attention, it affords you this ability to experiment more and kind of like get your bearings right about what it is you're trying to do as this solo creator going out there right. into the world. So right. there is a benefit to in the beginning, not being popular, uh, both from a, per, uh, a mental perspective, because you're like, don't worry about everyone because everyone's not there. Uh, and <laughs> I wish I would have known this myself because I would have started way earlier. Yeah. Uh, but also technically speaking, uh, big learning thing. Uh, you only learn it after you suffer through it. But uh, yeah. yeah, it affords yeah, you gonna, the ability you're gonna to probably try. suck at the beginning. You're going to probably suck, which is great. Okay. I yeah. think I think sucking at the beginning is very good um, because um, it is the path to getting better for real. As long as you can recognize it's like, I suck at this. <laughs> it needs to get better. If you're like, I'm the greatest. I, I don't understand. I'm the greatest. <laughs> right. You're not going to be at it for very long. It's not going to work out, I don't think. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but uh, a few more points and we're going to get to some comments. Um, we already kind of covered this. You pick the medium, the method. Uh, don't bother with the stuff that you don't like. Um, and uh, this, this last one is a, a good little bow on the topic is the I'm not good at this thing. I'm too old or I'm too young surrounding this thing. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not smart enough, et cetera. All these negative biases, like negative personal uh, self-deprecation. It's like those things, everybody has them. Um, and I think people who are critics typically uh, have them the most. And it is a method of coping for them. They use their own self-deprecation uh, to, or their the method of deprecation to sort of satisfy their own self-deprecation. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, being worried about the good enough, old enough, young enough, good looking enough, smart enough. Um, go, going back to what how we started, the be honest and share your journey and be honest about your journey and focus on the parts that might be helpful to other people. And that could be as simple as um, I'm working on this song and the chorus isn't working and these are the chords that I'm using. And, uh, you know, I tried all these things and I realized that this turnaround of the chords uh, interacts better with my verse chord progression. Uh, and so for all of you who are writing, it's like, check this out, the way that these things interact. You know, it's just like, it's the thing. Rather than being this bland cardboard box, it's uh, it's now a wholesome, lush globe of greenery. So whatever the case may be, like yeah. there's a million things. But uh, yeah, just be honest, share your journey. And it might be... Uh, I think you'll be always be thing. surprised about how, no matter where you are in life, what stage, age, 
um, what you're working on, there will always be a community of people that are either right there with you or have just gone through what you're going through or are a yeah. little bit behind you. Always. Yeah. And that community, it does, you don't like, you don't need very many people to be, a, to have a community, to be part of a community. It could be like right. three people. <laughs> right. It starts with a few. The biggest gap in terms of connecting with other people is one. So from zero connections to one connection, there is no gap that is bigger than that gap. Uh, once you, once you close that gap, uh, everything kind of fills, starts to fill in better unless you're a jerk, but this show is not about being a jerk. <laughs> no, if anything, that's, that's something that you and I have talked about and I've learned, you know, in the industry I'm in is how far just not being an a-hole will get you. Yeah. And it's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, and that applies to this big time, just Huge. simply not being an a-hole. I always like to think of that thing as uh, everybody knows someone who is rough and tumble or, you know, not necessarily always a pleasure. Uh, I don't really have anybody in my life like that now, but I've, I've experienced it in the past and I equate it to the person that you, you switch the street, you switch sides of the street. You're like, Oh, here comes so-and-so you cross the road. It's like, I don't want to be the catalyst for people crossing the road. Um, right. Exactly. And I want to, I want to go exactly in the direction of others. I don't want to be specifically a people pleaser, but uh, like, I don't want to go out of my way just for the sake of other people's pleasure or pleasing. But, uh, you well, know. It's a fine line to walk because I personally myself um, have been on the on the side of being too much sometimes you know i yeah too I, helpful i not not even that i've been the a-hole at oh, really? in my life yeah <laughs> i'm difficult at times i'm i'm too blunt i'm brash i do not sugarcoat anything so one of my biggest uh personal hurdles is when i care about somebody or something i don't hold back and i'm very, very blunt and not everybody can handle that. Um, yeah. So, but knowing it, it, that I'm sure as you get older, uh, you figured out ways to communicate more effectively. Correct. Yeah. Or maybe not. So it's, it, no, I yeah. have, uh, I've had to, you know, there's people in my life where I've needed to put the effort into like, it doesn't matter what your intentions are. If you come across a certain way, it's all for not. Um, yeah. Oh, so, well, yeah. Like that use, thing. It's like, don't mind him. He doesn't mean it. He's just this way. It's like, ah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's uh, got stuff to work on. <laughs> yeah. And to this day, I still am regularly practicing being better at this. But it's definitely, honestly, YouTube has probably helped me. Um, and then you kind of pointing out a positive like outlook on on it, like engaging with people that I don't know who are just looking to um, connect and as an opportunity to be helpful. It's it just all things where sometimes it can be like, oh, this again? Yeah. It, it helps me flex that, that muscle of being nicer and helpful. Um, yeah. And I can still be me, my blunt self, I think. Most of the people who watch me now, I think, can, can deal with that, you know? Yeah. Or they can't. And well, I, I think it's all kind of equalized out. You've come away a long way, buddy. <laughs> it's all about personal growth. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for those of you who don't want to really do it in, in dialogue of any sort, whether it be written or spoken, you can do it in your songs. Like if you, uh, if your music is lyrical, you can put it in your songs. And something I've discovered is like my music is all instrumental. But I usually write words to accompany quite a bit of it. Um, that could be like potential lyrics or whatever. They're not. I, I make instrumental music. But uh, a lot of times, at least for a bunch of foreign tunes, there are words that accompany each song. Um, so you can still put yeah, words to your music if, uh, even if it's instrumental and kind of like share 
through that. There's there are many ways to share. Anyhow, we're going to yeah. get to a few comments here. Yeah, there's, um, a, there's a lot of good, good ones. Uh, do you want to uh, address first few comments here, yeah, Nick? I'm going to scroll up a little yeah, bit. We got to get them on the screen. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I can't see. scroll it the same way you can. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. I'll start throwing some up and we can start addressing them. You okay. can read them. And uh... Turbo Plasma Chicken. Howdy, my dudes. Oh, totally agree with what's being said. Uh, do it for yourself. That way, that's what people will find interesting at the end of the day. If not, at least you're happy. Yeah. Uh, and I don't even think it's necessarily that it's what people find interesting. It's uh, what people become interested in. And those are two slightly different things, like from this perspective or from that perspective. Um, yeah, put yourself out there and be be for real. And it connects with people for real. It's like the fight between real amps and modelers. <laughs> Aaron, uh, it doesn't matter uh, if it's good, it's good. This is a Nick Hill. That's a Nick Hill philosophy right there. Yeah. I mean, we, we both have kind of in recent months adopted this attitude of like, I, I just want to make music and write music. Like this constant search and debate is, uh, how do I say this for me and you at this point, it's not important. No. Uh, it like, does sound good. Not yeah. good enough. It sounds good. Yeah. And I, I think like when people are looking to debate on things, um, I don't know, it just doesn't bring anything positive in, into anything. <laughs> like when it comes to those kinds of things. I'm like, yeah, I, I think either you want to use it or you don't want to use it. doesn't really matter. Just use yeah. what you want to use. There seems to be this like, uh, uh, what's the word where you kind of um, conflate the two where like someone's opinion on something to turns into a debate on something, you know, or like, yeah. So why it, it's like, but like, again, it always kind of harkens back to what I say. It's like, just because you don't think it's good enough for this or that doesn't mean it isn't for someone else. You know, it's like, yeah, like you've you've told me like about when you play the the squire the ba the baritone. It's yeah, like, yeah. No, you can't play metal on that. Like, <laughs> and people, but people are genuine about saying that. It's like, yeah, but I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like, what? You, you, it's weird. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Whatever, it's fine. Um, no, no, yeah, we're, go yeah, where we're it's not... warm. Uh, Ian Giroux, how are you, Ian? Uh, he says, go where it's warm as opposed to willingly going out in the cold and complaining that it's cold. Oh, that is so good. Yeah. That is so good. You just you just took that to a whole new level, Ian. Uh, yeah, that happens a lot. And I think that happens because a lot of people are trying to connect and maybe they're trying to connect to a community or with other people that are maybe not the people people that they that is rich for their you know their their place it's just not their people it's not their tribe um very interesting go yeah. where it's warm rather than out in the cold <laughs> let's see let's throw uh, this up uh 13 flaw says our drummer just told me he's moving to the other side of the country in two weeks the solo thing is looking tempting uh yeah I mean, distance does not mean squat anymore, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is opening a door for you to explore some solo work, but don't yeah. let distance be uh, an unnecessary barrier, you know? Yeah. Um, there's tons of bands, and people in the chat were kind of saying this, that don't live in the same state, you know? Yeah. And they, they collaborate and they write. They're like, the internet is beautiful for that, that's for sure. It's getting better every day. Yep. Very cool. Um, Let's see. What else we got? Uh, 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 here we go. This one This one looks profound. Aaron again. 
Uh, being an artist exposes you to opinions, and we all know what people or that people like to give uh, you theirs. Uh, so like anyone in the view of the public, uh, you need to be confident or the negativity will get you. Yes. Um, I don't, so I'm not overly confident. Uh, I think there's like, I get what you're getting at here. And I think it's, uh, it is very mindful, very smart, uh, perspective. Um, but yeah, not necessarily confident, just, I know what I'm doing. I know why I'm here. I, you know, something I noticed like with Nick Hill er, earlier in the Nick Hill thing is, um, you got, you got easily miffed by, uh, negative comments and maybe yeah. you still do to some extent, but I think now we talk about this sort of stuff a lot. Um, I just, it's like, I'm thankful for any comments. If somebody leaves a comment, I'm like, you went out of your way to engage with what I'm doing. So thank you. Uh, but uh, just focus once again, go where it's warm, you know, focus yeah. on, on the positive things, the places where you can lend a hand, the places where you can have a good hang, just focus on those. And you don't have to worry about uh, having an iron complex of confidence. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, I, it was, I think my, at the beginning, my thing was with negative comments was like, I'm not asserting myself. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to be helpful. Yeah. Um, and it might but, not be right, but maybe it'll give you a, a foot in the door. Right, exactly. And the thing is, like, I did kind of go about it in a dumb way at the beginning. I would get miffed and sometimes I would get into little back and forth with them, which is just a waste of time. Um, and I would like go and look at their channels and it was always somebody who had no videos or no yeah. creative outlet. And I'm like, I started realizing, Oh, that's the common thread is right. like a lack of some sort of creative <clears throat> and, outlet. So, and there really are people just like, let it go now. I really, it's like, I, 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 I don't care. You've come I a really long don't. way, buddy. <laughs> I like it. Um, what was it? The, the thing? Ah, oh, I, I lost it. It's gone. <laughs> um, uh, I like Connor's, uh, what he has to share here. Um, he's held up from, you know, wanting to put out the thing that he's the most proud of. He's like, oh, I don't want to put it out because it's like not the best. Uh, and what if, you know, I figure out how to do it well or better and then I can't go back to it because it's already released. Well, that's, you can always redo stuff. You can call it yeah. a demo. You can, and, uh, but he's realizing this, like he knows this. He's not. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Connor, you like, you can't, you can, and you will. Put out the demo. Put out the yeah. demo. <laughs> you're, you're never going to be able to, it's like, you're not going to come out. And I think this is something I've brought this up before and I'm not calling you a child or a teenager for anything. No, no. Um, I'm just using this ex as an example. Like my, my kids, um, they're, they're 19 and 17 now. Um, but anytime they try something that they've never done, they expect to be instantaneously good at it. I'm like, that's not how it works, man. Um, like you have to do that first thing in order to do the next thing. Like there's no, there's no, you can't skip. Yeah. Um, Some people are naturally gifted in certain areas, but it's very sure. rare. Yeah. Uh, let's see, man. A lot of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Turbo plasmas is a good one. While I find another one. Yeah, Gene says. Yeah, so Turbo says. Remember, you don't, you don't just create your magnet, your uh, magnum opus at the beginning. Non-attachment is a useful tool for the artist. Uh, yeah, I mean that's something I've learned, putting out more and more music. Like you also realize it kind of snowballs into something. Like when you get that first one done, even if it isn't oh. perfect, you're like, okay, I'm ready for the next one. And yeah. it, it, that for me, at least at this stage, keeps on 
going. Um, Creative momentum. Yeah, you have to like. You're not going to put out your best work at the beginning because what's the point at that? Yeah. You know, like and for the nothing to strive for. Yeah, and for the point zero 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 per one percent of the entire world's population ever who have good for them. <laughs> I wouldn't want that burden personally. No, you know? neither would I. We get stuck with too many options or uh, peeps brand stuff or listen with their eyes, not ears. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, similarly to what we were talking about before, like, the go where it's warm thing, the focus on what works for you rather than what doesn't work. Um, don't worry about the rest of them. <laughs> right. Delusion is a healthy <laughs> dose of delusion. Well said. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I am deluded. I am great. Yeah. This Thomas kind of follows it up by saying a comedy bit I heard like comedians getting booed off stage. Most people wouldn't go back, but comedians are like, that went pretty good. Yeah, yeah well, I, I didn't was... die, right? I didn't die. What's the worst well, that could how happen? Many, <laughs> how many times have I used this analogy of skateboarding where it's like, yeah, you know, you're going to suck at a 360 flip. How many times you're going to shin yourself or yeah. roll your ankle before you start landing it and getting that muscle memory? You're like, most people are going to suck at the thing or at least it's a, it's a, you know, it's a curve. You're not going to just, bloop, and unless you're that 1%, you're the outlier, but most of us are going to have to gradually work into it. Yeah. Gene, this uh, is a, a, something I struggled with. I know I keep grabbing comments. I'm trying to get through them. Got 20 mixes for one song and haven't released it yet. Well, stop. <laughs> yeah um i'm gonna quickly uh get to matt's question here he's just talking about like low base stuff and the yeah, challenge dude. challenge of uh, addressing it especially when it's when they start going back to playing live and um i would say the best thing to do so number one don't when it comes to bass in any kind of music, no matter how low the tuning is, don't focus too much on the sub bass, no matter what. Sub bass is never going to really do much for you. Um, in, a, in a band scenario, maybe in dance music, you can get away with some sub bass, but don't worry too much about the sub bass. But you can use, let's say you, you know, you're tuned to, I can't remember what it says here, da, 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 E. So low E. Uh, low E1. You could use a regular bass tuned to low E1 and then pair it with an octaver with a blend or maybe do a two amp rig where there's one amp that is clean and one amp with an octaver on it. But the octaver level is very low compared to the main signal. And all it does is just sort of fill in and give the bass a little bit more size compared to the guitars because when guitar and bass is tuned to the same octave um they can tend to sound similarly similar in size so you can use an octaver mixed down from the main bass signal to do this live and if you'd like to talk more about it uh the bun.ca or i am doing a live stream on friday Fire night base. uh which is 10 p.m. No, uh, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, so I'm doing a, a stream on my channel on Friday night, and we can get into that topic uh, like crazy. But I hope right that on. helps a little bit to get it started. Thank you, Matt. Uh, um, I want to. Connor brings up. Uh, he says, "Thanks for the advice. May just have to use that demo idea. I just want to show you guys something real quick." Yeah. Um, I'm bringing up my screen and I'll bring up my band camp. Can you see it? Yeah, it's perfect. This track right here at the beginning before my EP, this is one of the tracks that's on the EP. Yeah. See, it says from another time, 
demo. I just put it out because I was afraid. Yeah. That track ended up on this. And right it's here. awesome to be able to AB the original and the final production because the production just leapt ahead in bounds. Would you? Yeah, I was, I was, absolutely. But, but had I not released it, I wouldn't have like had that little bit of momentum. Like I was making so much of it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it was just holding me back. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think put, put, put something out is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Put it you out. You guys that are on the fence. And maybe you guys that are, uh, think about the thing, like ask yourself the question, why am I not just trying just try one thing. So in a lot of cases, it's put out some music, um, start a YouTube channel, whatever. It's like everything, no matter what you start, it's probably going to be a longer road, like a long game thing, uh, a year, two years, three years. Like things are only starting to kind of like work in a, I don't know, an interesting way to me. Uh, as far as maybe the business side of things go with everything with bun, but it's taken five years to get here. Uh, and, right. and, and it's still not, you know, I'm not crushing it or anything like that. Not to say that my scenario is a great example of how it is or how you should do it. That's not what I'm saying. Um, all I'm saying is that you know, I'm long game focused with it in terms of uh, I am really interested in the creative part. I'm so interested in the creative part. I've come to love making videos, especially the cinematic stuff. And I want to do that to an even higher level. And I want to learn more about it. I love writing music more than I've ever loved writing music ever before. And I've yeah. found a few different ways to kind of apply myself with music um, that I just kind of wouldn't have got to any of it if I wouldn't have just like kept showing up, kept showing up, kept showing up. And the interesting part about it is uh, after a while, other things have sort of filled in around it that I didn't expect or whatever. And perhaps it will keep growing. I don't know where it's going. I have ideas of what would be interesting or what I'm interested in. But uh, yeah, just start and have that long game. Be like, I love writing music and I'm just going to commit to writing music. I love making videos. I'm going to commit to making videos. Whatever. I love Whatever it is you love to do, make sure that you know that thing. Also make sure you are aware of what is the thing that's holding me back and try and find a balance there. I highly recommend it because there's nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst case scenario when it comes to like putting out music? What's the worst yeah. case scenario? No one is going to listen to it. Yeah. You're just going it, to, it'll just go without some listens on Bandcamp. That's the worst case scenario. Yeah. Who cares? So it's pretty low stakes. You're like I got it out. I released the music finally. <laughs> but something positive that'll happen is you get the ball rolling. Oh yeah. You learn from the process of putting your music out and three people might listen to your song. One person might buy it. And what did we say earlier about the, the gap between zero and one? I forget. What did we say? It is the greatest gap in all things. Mm. Yeah. The biggest gap you will have to, close is to get between from zero uh people interested in your music i'm talking about people you've never met you know some of your friends might already be interested in what you're doing but like a mm -hmm. you know a person from the other side of the world uh, it's a big gap and sometimes it takes a while to to close that gap um but uh wouldn't worry about it just get it out and one can become two, can become three. And through that process, you're going to meet some people. And you're going to be like, oh, you're awesome. And they're like, no, you're awesome. And then you're like, let's play guitar together across continentally. 
and uh yeah who knows <laughs> yeah zero to one peter thiel teal i don't know peter teal hmm. but i'm gonna look into that book um Aaron, uh, I made a YouTube channel and some songs because I got tired of making excuses. This advice is true. Uh, it's better to do it than to regret not. Yeah, the regret is yeah. life yep. crushing. Um, yeah, and you got nothing to lose. It's fun stuff to do. It's way better than, you know, um, running in a street gang or something like that. I don't know, getting up to no good. Uh, drinking too much, whatever. Do this stuff instead. <laughs> yeah, you just never know where it's going to lead, you know. Yeah. And and Bun made this point, like, um, not to to, to to drill this home even further, but when it comes to like video making, um, I started making video for YouTube because I wanted people to hear my music, and in turn, pooch, quiet down. I learned to video edit to such a degree where that's what I do for a job now. Right. I'm a videographer and a video editor because I started doing this and I didn't know it was going to lead to that. Yeah. But that's an amazing, like one of those amazing sidebar, like what did that happen? <laughs> yeah. So just, just take that first step. Yeah musically or with video and the beautiful thing is they go hand in hand they really do yeah they really do timeline all that stuff but it's 9 11 yeah yep we've we've run our our course of course the, uh just for those of you who do not know uh this is typically you know we try to keep it around the one hour one and a half hour mark to the max um the show is called bandless it is a weekly live podcast for solo music creatives and uh, it happens every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And Nick Hill and myself, we dig into a bunch of the challenges that solo music creators face. And, you know, we try to shine light on tools, tactics, and perspectives that might kind of help us to make another step forward. So if you're into all of yeah. that, we do it every Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, and I hope you guys are getting something out of this. I know it's in the early stages, and uh, you know we'll get better at this. I, I know it's not a perfect science yet, but the point of this is to be helpful, to help you guys, because we've been there, get out of your own way. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. And in, in some cases, we're still there with certain things, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm not a brilliant guy. Nick is not a brilliant guy. This is just about sharing on a kind of one-to-one -one level. Discord group. Oh, should we talk about the Discord group before we sign off? Um, why don't we make that the topic? Where me and you are going to have to do our our. our we got to do some more and the legwork. Yeah, we got to do more legwork. But we maybe we make that the topic of the next episode because we've been talking about it yeah. and talking about it. And we haven't acted on it. All right. The qu the the answer is yes. We want there to be a Discord, um, with obviously a baritone obsessed element to it. We're we're looking into like a co a collaborative collective community where obviously we'll have a baritone obsessed channel and a mixing channel and a share your music channel stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. We just we don't know much about it, so um we need we're gonna need input from you guys so um maybe maybe if we put something on the books bun we can get our butts in gear because here's yeah. the thing we're also still trying to be youtubers and write music. and write music yeah and uh, make so, it all work <laughs> but I, but i think maybe we can we can i think bun we can may probably get a call put together and, and start laying the groundwork maybe we can find what's tomorrow tomorrow's maybe. thursday um yeah you and i we're gonna we're gonna have a, are you free tomorrow night nick yeah okay so nick and i we're gonna talk about a 
uh, sort of baritone obsessed, like a bun, Nick Hill sort of collaborative discord uh, where we focus on uh, baritone guitars and all that kind of cool stuff, but also on the amp tones and production side, which is more of Nick's wheelhouse. And uh, we're definitely going to put this together and we're at least going to beta test it. And if it goes somewhere, it goes somewhere. If it doesn't, then we'll shut it down. But uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit more next week's show. Uh, but we will also have a topic for next week's show. We're just going to schedule in talking yeah. about the Discord. I promise. Yes, we'll get to it. Yes. Because enough people at this point have, have inquired. We'd be kind of foolish not to explore it. Give it a beta test. Yeah. So for sure. Thank you guys cool. for your patience. Yes. And thank you to everyone who has hung out in the in this stream tonight. Uh, the numbers are definitely up and the uh, the spirit is up even higher. So I really, um, really appreciate the interactions and the thoughtful of those interactions like we're having really absolutely really great conversations here uh i i'm super stoked to do it and uh, i'm stoked to do it <clears> next <throat> week i have a stream on friday at 9 p.m cent uh eastern standard time uh 10 p.m central and nick has a stream on his own personal stream on saturday night nick you want to talk about your stream yeah saturdays um Saturday Night Hangs, uh, we dive into everything. We dive into to mixing topics. I work on music live on the stream half the time. Um, answer your questions. We do Helix stuff. Basically, I kind of just bring you guys into my Saturday night and, and work on stuff. And wherever it goes, that's where it goes. It's a fun hang. Um, it's a good time. Yeah. And uh, I also have a video coming out tomorrow that's the goal it's a long one it goes back to aaron i think aaron kind of asked a question about what's the most guitar tracks in one song used by you guys in, a, in your songs Th this will be that <laughs> <laughs> um, i i am a it, left it, right guy one left one right that's it <laughs> yeah this th i that's typically what i do too yeah. but this video i get a lot of questions about mixing guitars and how i go about it every single day I think it's a good topic to have multiple videos on. This will be not my first guitar mixing video, but it is going to be out tomorrow. It is almost an hour long. Uh, it's awesome. That'll answer your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what's going on with me. Video coming out Saturday night stream. Bun has his on Fridays, yeah. uh, seven or eight central. Uh, nine p. Yeah. It... Are you earlier than me? Yes. Eight, eight central. Yeah. Eight central. Eight central. And okay. I talk about baritone guitars and philosophical artist being an artist stuff. So Yeah. Bun stream is killing it. This is gonna be what, like you just jumped into this head first and it's going well. It's all because of you, it's Nick Hill. Time. It's all because of you. Thank you, Nick Hill. <laughs> Absolutely. I did push you. you did. I did push you to get this going. Yeah, it's all you. Yeah. Finally I contributed to your to your growth in some way oh you've been helping me out for it's, years <laughs> it's been it's been a, it's been a little out of balance bun's my go-to man no, you no, guys no, don't no. know that he is my my bro it's on so many levels oh man i'm so excited too for my next project it'll be out very 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 soon we got the logos and oh yeah oh man i i'm so stoked i can't wait oh, sick 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 Okay, Nick Hill, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about more of this stuff next week, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, oh, wait. Have the camera's over here. Bye.